for their next own journey. Because no one journey could be the same. Even if I did it the same way one more time, it might not work. Of course, there are principles that people want to think about. I'm going to stop. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Faraz. So now I would like to uh, invite uh, the next speaker, Arjit, uh, Dr. Arjit Bhattacharya. He is founder and CEO, Virtual Infocom World Leader Summit. So without taking much of the time, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Arjit Bhattacharya. He will speak on the topic, how you can start your business and run with technology. Dr. Arjit? Yeah. I'm here. Thank okay, you so thank much you. for inviting me. Me. And yeah, super happy to see um, all of you once again. Uh, beautiful moderation, uh, Professor Sunita. And uh, I really loved uh, the way the previous speaker presented uh, uh, regarding uh, his own uh, speech, as well as a uh, little bit of things, which is basically talking on mentoring. So what I have learned uh, so far so good, before I hop into the topic, I'll uh, tweak uh, my topic a little bit because uh, the previous speaker uh, sent a very good, uh, nice tone uh, regarding uh, the importance of uh, mentoring as well as importance of probably raising capital for um, entrepreneurs. So he uh, put up a, a very nice uh, line, who is an entrepreneur? Uh, well. Definitely, there are a lot of definition in our dictionary. There are a lot of presentations. There are a lot of uh, maybe uh, documented data from internet, which uh, people can get regarding entrepreneurship. Uh, the one-liner answer usually people say is uh, uh, it's a journey. Definitely, it's a journey. Uh, but then I call this journey as uh, riding a tiger. Uh, there is a podcast that I run called Riding Tiger with Arjit. And there is a reason why uh, I call entrepreneurship is riding a tiger. The solo reason is when you start your business, you start it with the concept that uh, it's a cub, it's a baby. You are feeding your business. You start with very probably uh, a small nominal amount and you are feeding it with milk. And once you start feeding it with milk, you have an expectation that in due course of time, the tiger will grow. It will become big. Uh, it will run and you will ride on the top of it. But there is a fear as an entrepreneur when you start it, when you start the riding, if you stop and the tiger is hungry, it might attack you, even though it is your tiger. And that's business. So as an entrepreneur, I have uh, I've been running multiple different businesses uh, for last uh, 26 plus years now. Uh, and uh, I have seen that that particular fear is always there within a real entrepreneur. They fear that if they stop, their business will stop. If they stop earning, it will become very difficult to sustain. And that's not easy. Trust me on this. In this era, when you start your own business, even though if you're a startup, people will probably say that, hey, there is a startup. He's just started his journey. Well, then um, when it comes to giving money for your work, it takes time. Giving orders for your work, it takes a lot of, lot of trust factor. So entrepreneurship journey for me is uh, all about uh, riding a tiger. And in due course of time, uh, entrepreneurs do have an option to raise capital. Now, probably we have seen the bubble that a uh, lot of many startups, they, they felt that uh, they'll be raising capital and they're, they'll be doing fine. Let me share my screen and show you a few bit of things which will probably help our audience to understand uh, Raising capital is not business and uh, definitely what happens when you start your business. Uh, just give me a thumbs up if you can see my full screen. Is it in full screen mode? I believe yes. Okay. Uh, so a little bit of introduction of mine. I'm Marijit Bhattacharya. I'm a founder of India's one of the first game development company, which I started in back in 1998 with less than one dollar in pocket. In Indian currency, it was 49 rupees. And from there, I grew from one uh, person company to a couple of uh, 
100 plus people um, organization. I'm founder of Coinnovate Venture. That's an accelerator and a fund. Uh, we usually look for scale up ventures whom we can support and uh, let them grow. I'm founder of One Leader Summit, which is a 98 plus countries network at the moment. We do B2B Summit. We do pitching sessions. We do a lot many different kinds of activities and uh, knowledge sharing session. I'm founder of Glam World Face, which is one of the finest uh, movie production unit as well as a model and celebrity management company, which uh, happened eventually during my entrepreneurial journey, as well as I'm a consultant to ADB, director of uh, Royal Family of uh, Dubai, uh, director of uh, Global Wealth Forum, and a partner of 101836VC, that's a health tech-based VC based out of US. A couple of other introduction of mine, like I'm a national jury member of National Startup Award run by Government of India, and a few bit of my um, odd works that I have done. So a couple of media felt that they should do news about this odd man. So that odd man is right now presenting in front of you um, a few bit of snapshots of my previous speech, which usually happens. That's the kind of audience that usually I get um, internationally or nationally. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to share a few bit of my real-time experience of creating business plan making a very structured technology business in short time of span. Uh, allow me for 15 minutes to present my presentation. Hope that will be fine. Um, when we talk about creating a slide deck for business, what I have learned from the practical experience coming from the VC background or working with multiple banks or working with HNIs, raising capital for multiple startups or existing business or a um, few bit of corporates. First thing that we, we usually lack is the summary part. A business plan, when you talk about a slide deck, a pitch deck, uh, there is a big difference between a business plan and a pitch deck. So I'm talking about a pitch deck at the moment and then I'll slowly move to the business plan part. Usually a pitch deck consists of 10 different slides. Uh, I'm just connecting the dots because my previous speaker just spoke about the importance of mentoring. So when you mentor a startup, they are probably looking for starting their business or they are in their existing business. This is highly important if they are looking for scale up. Uh, first thing that they need to tell is why exactly they exist and what exactly they want. That means, uh, are they making some kind of disruption? Is there any kind of changing factor that is there, which they're maybe catering to? Is it very, very traditional business? That is completely fine. Are they into trading or are they manufacturer? Are they into the service business or they are a product company? If there is a patent which they have applied, that's a, of course a plus point. Will that patent affect in the existing ecosystem of business line or the market? Second important factor that a lot many people lack, what problem they are solving? Well, for an example, if somebody is building something which is on sustainable fashion, then define it why you are, what exactly the problem which is there in the market. For an example, the clothes that you're wearing, the kind of color that you're using, probably that is with a lot many chemical that is harmful for your body. It might affect with your breathing system. Maybe people who have got uh, asthma, they can get affected. So all these factors, if you can mention and then say that how you are solving the problem, that makes sense. So the first three slides, is for the attraction for any kind of investor or your potential partner. The fifth key point, I'm gonna skip the fourth one. Business model, anybody can actually give their own input. The fifth important point is, do they have any kind of magic? Do they have any kind of technology? Now, technology doesn't mean IT. IT is a part of technology. Uh, coming from definitely from various different kind of tech background, I can show a uh, lot of different uh, devices maybe, which has been created by us. But then if you look at in the market, there are beautiful companies, great entrepreneurs who are creating massive work. So do they have those kind of magical technology which can impact in the market? For an example, in my recent interaction with one of uh, my mentees, they were trying to build a self-sustaining building. And they are creating it as a, as a model building wherein you don't need any kind of external energy. You don't need anything else. But rather, you use nature to run that entire building itself. It's not a small room. It's a whole, full, pleasant, five-story building which they converted into a complete 
self-running, self-sustaining building itself. So do they have such kind of technology which can actually give humanity a betterment and it is affecting uh, nature in a way, in a positive way? If yes, there are people who will be supporting you like anything. It can be any kind of business, but make sure you have something magical which can attract people. Do you have marketing and sales funnel which is ready? For an example, somebody uh, pitched me that they say that we are going to start something which is on hospitality education. And um, we are going to send uh, students from India to abroad so that they can study. But then they don't have any office. They don't have any counselor. They don't have anything else. Rather, they are trying to get a couple of students by generating inquiry. And then once the students will pay, they will take a rented place. It actually doesn't happen like this. It's completely opposite. Until unless you put your own money or you do some kind of partnership with someone who have got a space where you can probably start your counseling process and you have a trust factor that you have sent uh, students earlier or you have a trusted face who have done it earlier in your team, that makes sense. So when you start as an entrepreneur, it's not about your own business, rather the kind of people that you're bringing in your business. It is not about your own experience, but rather your team's experience. Do you have that? If yes, people have a tendency of trusting you. Or do you have a product which is already running in the market and people do trust that? Yeah. Uh, the seventh uh, vital point I have seen in a lot of different kind of uh, uh, business plan competition, being there as a jury, people make a statement that, oh my God, we don't have any kind of competition. We are the only one in the market. So we're going to rock the market, disrupt the market, and then get all the money on our own. That's alarming. If you don't have a competition, then educating the market will take a lot of, lot of money. So better you find out where you are, which market you are catering. So here, maximum number of cases, when as a startup, people usually start, they usually fail because they don't understand their competition locally or globally. Yeah. Do you have an excellent team? Try to get at least a two people team member when you start your own business. That attracts a lot many other people, including investors. Do you have any projection? Have you achieved any kind of milestone? And what is your status at the moment? Just make sure you have it in your pitch deck. This is completely fine to give a latest generation pitch deck, which we call as smart pitch deck. Um, when we talk about business plan, when you talk about definitely business plan made on the basis of technology business, because my fellow friend, she asked me that I should stick to technology. So I'll be talking more on a tech part, but I'll make it generic so that I don't go very deep into deep tech technology uh, because I'm coming from uh, virtual reality, game development, blockchain, AI, and uh, definitely on machine learning background. So I'll skip all those factors. When you start your business, try to see if you have a story or not. If you don't have a story, try to make a story which attracts people. But don't fake it. Tell your real story. People have a tendency, sometimes they, they don't understand how to tell their own story. Well, if you need help, I'll be more than happy to help uh, how to structure your own life story so that people are attracted. Just for a quick input, because it's a large gathering of 27 people, uh, if you have YouTube, uh, kindly put my name, Arijit Bhattacharya. You will find out my face and a channel with a very nominal, small number of subscribers. But you will uh, find out probably a video in a channel called Virtual Infocom Games, which is our uh, company channel. A huge number of subscribers are there. There is a video of my life in an animated uh, way. That's my own personal life. That has been used multiple times in several different universities to teach students how to start business and then sustain and then grow. Feel free to take that. If you don't have, I'll try to see that if I can send a mail to everybody or rather the common mail so that it can be circulated. Um, the next important point regarding creating any kind of tech business, identify the gap in the market. Now, how do you identify a gap? What is the difference between a normal business and a tech business? Well, a traditional business, if you look at maybe, uh, I'll take example of maybe a maybe a, a food business, yeah? You have a quick serving restaurant and uh, you're using food bloggers, you're using all those kind of media channels to promote your own restaurant. 
but it's not happening properly. You don't know the reason why. The sole reason is, and nowadays, if you look at the, the customers, they are now health conscious. They are not looking for a common, traditional, usual, so-called food which will be consumed in body and it will probably affect your body. Nowadays, people are looking for the calorie calculation. So here comes your tech part. When you cook as a probably as a cook inside your own restaurant, try to understand what kind of calorie balance you are maintaining in your food. Put a small block which makes a statement that what kind of calorie it will be there if you consume that in your body. And do that with a multiple different kind of combination that you can see probably in any kind of five star. When you go for breakfast or maybe you are going for a, a, a dinner or maybe lunch, you will find out nowadays people are using small, small uh, display with the, the kind of calorie that you're going to consume if you eat that chicken or maybe you are consuming that vegetable. So when you try to give a great uh, feedback to your body as a customer, you need to understand and people nowadays do that, uh, people who are health, health conscious, they try to calculate that in their own mind, how much calorie that they are consuming, how much protein, how much carbohydrate, how much good fat they are consuming. So if you do that with your maybe previous calculated way, and then you have a system, a mechanism, asking the customer what is their blood group and what kind of food they should consume as a suggestion, that makes a great business model. So when you enter, you get a feeling that I'm going to get something which is healthy from this place. It can be done in cloud kitchen as well. So here comes your tech part, which actually gives a very good feeling to your end customer. Not only that, if you are inclined towards more, you can create a vendor reality based application, which can detect and understand your body, calculate your skin tone, understand your heat balance, and then give you the suggestion. Um, when you run business, definitely there is something called who is your first customer. So definitely uh, MVP makes a great, great impact into this. Um, if you have a lot of students in your incubator, I'm not sure how many universities are participating at the moment. If you have an incubator, encourage them to create an MVP and ask them to go to market. Don't try to sell it inside the campus or to the teachers itself. Ask them to go to market and then give a free sample to the audience and get their own feedback. That gives two things. A, it validates the product. B, it understands the market. Most important part, many a times I have seen with our uh, incubators in our own uh, uh, accelerator that uh, usually people who are consuming it for the first time, they give a feedback. That feedback is amazing. In fact, I've seen someone who said that, hey, I really like this product. I would love to join in your business, maybe improvise your product. That also happened. So encourage your students, encourage anyone who is a first-time entrepreneur to do such kind of activities. It opens up their mind like anything instead of uh, getting a lot many theoretical aspects. Uh, definitely, there will be competition for the time set. I will skip a little bit of uh, slides, but this is important part. Build a scalable business model. What is a scalable business model? Is this generating revenue at the moment? If it is generating revenue, uh, is it ensuring profitability? Initial time, it may happen that you are not earning profit. That is fine. Are you working in volume? Is your product acceptable in the market? Let me take example of one of my mentees. He is into uh, delivery. So they have lot many bikes. He is converting entire biking ecosystem of his own company into e-bikes. And he's giving delivery of food of anything. I mean, he's one of the largest probably in uh, Calcutta at the moment, doing massive work. But that fellow is not profitable at the moment. He's in debt. That is completely fine. If people are growing, they are taking loan, and then they are trying to make an impact that is completely fine as a business model, as long as it is scalable. So where he can scale up? He can scale up in multiple different cities of maybe in India initially. Uh, as a leap, there is an option in Middle East where he can hop in with the e-bike. They will get a subsidy. They will get a lot of support from the ministry and government and they can run their business. So these kind of market accessibility and collaboration is very much needed if you are running an incubator. And I'm sure that a lot when you have 
those kind of uh, collaboration and there are a lot of great incubators who are working. Uh, this slide is one of my close to my heart. I'm not sure if you can cherish it. Uh, I call the perfect team as rhino, swan, tiger, owl, snake and elephant. Why these animal instincts? When you run any kind of business, it can be technology, it can be non-technology, it doesn't matter. You need a person who can take bullet for you. Rhino is that kind of character. Maybe the PR head is your rhino. Swan, a person who can extract the water and get the actual milk, which means there will be information. You need to extract knowledge from information. So you need a person who can extract it, give it towards a proper knowledge and create an amazing product. Maybe your uh, CMO, it can be your CEO, it can be anyone. The tiger is usually you who started the business, the founder who is always hungry, looking for more and more business. He is fearful. People fear them, but then still they love that particular chap. So that's the tiger kind of character that you need. Owl is a person who can see through in dark where there is something for prey. That means uh, if you have a CFO in your team who understand how to manage money and then roll it, nothing like it. This is most crucial part. Even though if you are a great technologies, if your finance is not proper, you are not going to sustain the business very long. So get someone who is experienced as well as energetic in your business and in sync with your concept. Get someone who is dynamic, who is uh, unpredictable. That's a snake character. Usually the sales guy is that kind of character. It's not a bad uh, animal, to be very honest. Snake is one of the finest creature whom you cannot predict. We fear because we can't predict uh, that particular chap. Uh, you use the venom inside the head of snake for medicinal purpose. You fear because you can't actually have that bite in your body directly but then it is required. So have that kind of person or personality in your team. It is going to be a rocking company like anything. Get an elephant who is slow, who is memorable. He's an advisor in your company who can give you a lot of great advice because he's coming with a lot of, lot of, lot of industry experience. If you get that kind of person in your uh, company, not as free, kindly, don't take advisors for taking for granted. I have seen um, mainly in India, people usually take advisors, maybe the mentors, uh, because they are they are uh, they are teachers. Uh, try to give them a small little bit of token of appreciation. Uh, maybe that is not justifiable, but then give something. It will open up two different kind of mindset. A, you have a mindset that I have someone in my head who can tell you uh, what to do, what not to do. Rather, he will be saving me. And in return, I'm giving a token, very simple, small amount of money. That is fine. It can be 100 rupees. doesn't matter. He or she will probably not mind if they like that business. But then it creates a bond and relationship. And try to dilute a little bit of equity if you are serious uh, in your business. Uh, regarding products, if you are a tech business, this is specifically for tech, uh, techies. If you create a very robust portfolio of your intellectual property, um, I have seen a lot of IP didn't actually work in the market. The solo reason is from the perspective of theoretical uh, aspect, we feel that it is required in the market, but then we lack uh, how to check, how to look at the market, what ex exactly they need. So hence, uh, it is very much required to create a tech business with a market survey and then earn a revenue. So if you create an IP which can affect the market, try to make our revenue generation model. That will help a lot. Um, I'm going to skip a little bit. What are the kind of scale-up opportunities that is there? We have accelerators. We have business development team. We have networking sessions, market connect, partnership, funding for VCs, angels, CSR, grants, and PE. The business chambers are there. The global networks are there. Definitely, it's a full-fledged ecosystem. So as an entrepreneurship development uh, uh, council, I would say, I call our, our group of fellow other uh, professors, doctors, and fellow entrepreneurs as a council. Uh, these things are very much required, which will actually impact a lot of, lot of entrepreneurs when they start. Um, and then definitely if uh, people are looking for money, only one question that I ask uh, to anybody, I think that's very common to any uh, VC business, is your venture gaining at least 10% of the market? If yes, do you have a customer group? Do you have a profitability? If not, when exactly you're going to earn profit? 
Do you have ROI for the investors? And do you have a prototype? These things are most important. If you are mentoring a startup, try to find out these answers. I think they will do good. I will skip my uh, last presentation. I'll, uh, sorry, I'll skip my other slides because there's talk a lot about valuation. Rather, I'll end here because I think I'm done with 15 minutes and I am using three minutes grace more time. So thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to speak and uh, share the insights with uh, all the valuable other panelists. If you have any question, I'm ready to take. Dr. Sunita, uh, Professor Sunita, we can't hear you, it's muted. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Arajit, for such a nice presentation. Very beautifully, you draw the attention of the uh, attendees on business pitch instead of focusing more on the business plan because uh, it is business pitch which uh, gives you a way uh, to move forward. And I truly believe that you act as an advisor in this presentation for all the individuals who are interested uh, as an entrepreneur and would like to start up with some of their ideas. Uh, you draw the attention on identifying the gaps in the market. Instead of enjoying that you are the only one, it's better to design how to focus and proceed. Again, uh, you try to link up uh, the role of a technology uh, as a need to launch a business and uh, how AI can beautifully, you know, give a touch with the promotion of your product, like uh, touching, um, specifying your blood group and type of food you're looking for. And that's how you can, you know, specialize the business. So these are some of the tips and tools through which an individual can come up with the same idea in a new way. And they can go for a sustaining their business for a long uh, your uh, your uh, indication towards understanding your first few customers. Uh, this is something which is very uh, important because if you are not aware, who will be your first few key customers? How can we proceed further? So these are some of the points. Uh, and again, are uh, very important. How we can design the team members uh, with the help of whom uh, we can proceed further or can sustain for a long and can prove ourselves. So these are some of the very important points on which you draw the attention of the uh, presentees here. And I hope uh, these points will uh, put up as a guide so mark line to proceed further. So I would like to thank you once again for your this eye-opening presentation. So thanks, Dr. Arjit. Thank you. With this... Uh, I would like to uh, request our uh, next speaker, Mr. Santhil Vankideshan. Uh, he would like to go for a presentation on the topic, private startup ecosystems. Mr. Santhil, he is the president and managing director, Zold Academy Private Limited. So in spite of taking much of time, I would like to uh, request uh, Mr. Santhil to introduce himself and proceed further. Deep. Am I audible, Santhil, sir? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Y